comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. The Baghdad Battery is several of so-called out-of-place artifacts, an object that appears to perform a technology that predates when that technology is commonly believed to have been invented. So almost certainly, this must mean ancient aliens did it. But in case this is not true, we will be looking at the Baghdad Battery, the supposed first form of battery that predates the most commonly believed invention of the battery by nearly 2,000 years. The Baghdad Battery is a 2,200-year-old clay vessel that was discovered near modern-day Baghdad, Iraq. The artifact has been attributed to the Perithian Empire, with the jar itself dated to sometime around 200 BCE. It was first described in 1938 by German archaeologist Wilhelm Koenig. The original artifact stood around 5.5 inches by 3 inches in diameter. The opening was sealed with an asphalt plug, which held in place a copper sheet that was rolled into a cylinder. The tube was capped at the bottom with a copper disc held in place by more asphalt, and a narrow iron rod was placed through the middle. When the jar is filled with an electrolyte such as grape juice or red wine vinegar, you have yourself a battery. The acid facilitates a free flow of electrons when two metal terminals are connected. Whether these ancient vessels were actual batteries or not, we're going to apply some modern knowledge and see if we can produce an actual battery using the available technologies of the day in around 200 BCE. So most people are probably familiar with the lemon battery. It may have been a project you did in science class in school, but it's a very simple. Just take a lemon and you get two different metals. Here we have a zinc coated nail and here we have a brass screw. And you just shove both of these in there and you have a battery. So we've got a multimeter here. So we run this and we get a little bit less than a volt. So the lemon batteries, I think there's a kind of a misconception that it's the actual lemon that is producing the electricity, but really the lemon is just a vessel. The lemon really isn't too important and you can just replace it with salt water. Ultimately what is happening is an electrochemical reaction between the two metals when they're connected in a complete circuit. The citric acid in the lemon acts as an electrolyte, which conducts electricity. In a process called oxidization, the zinc sheds electrons as charged electrical ions into the acid. This causes zinc to have a negative charge and cause electrons to flow up the wire through the circuit and re-enter the lemon through the copper metal. In the electrolyte, two positively charged hydrogen ions combine with two electrons at the copper electrode surface, forming uncharged hydrogen gas. The lemon battery is very similar to the first historically recognized battery that was made in 1799, the Voltic Pile. Substituting iron for the zinc in the setup, you get a very similar, although weaker battery. And effectively, this is what the Baghdad battery might possibly have been. All right, welcome. And today we're actually filming in front of a live studio audience. All right, so in order to make the Baghdad battery, we need the vessel to hold the electrolyte solution. The shape does not matter, but the traditional shape looked like this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So I'm just making the sides. So this will be the bottom, okay. Pinch the old sides. Really pinch back. Give it a little pinch. Kind of nice. Okay. Bag then. Here it is. <laughs> Straight from Baghdad. Now just a pit fire the ceramics overnight. Next, to cast the bronze cylinder portion of the battery.
So the last piece of the actual battery is gonna be the electrolyte solution. We have a few different options available to us, both at the time and uh, things we've unlocked. So I'm going to uh, do a test of each of these and see if there's any difference of uh, the amount of voltage we get. So we have iron and a copper alloy to try out on these different solutions and see what gives the best reaction, what has the best voltage. We can scale that up in our larger battery and see how much voltage we can stack by doing a few of them. We have lemon juice. It's the citric acid in that that allows it to work. Then we have what is believed to possibly have been what was in the Baghdad battery, which is a red wine vinegar. And then we have a control of just a standard white vinegar. And then we have brine salt water solution. And then we have sulfuric acid, which technically was discovered sometime around here. I thought they might either all be exactly the same, or if anything, the strongest acid, the concentrated sulfuric acid would be the most reactive. But uh, it's actually the vinegars that performed best. All right, so now we have all of the different elements for making the actual battery. We have the different ceramics, the Laura made, and when we pit fired, we have a few iron rods, and then we have the, uh, the copper tube. And casting a tube is surprisingly difficult. So a lot of these aren't the greatest. It's probably our best one. Uh, it is theorized that it was more of a foil that they wrapped around it, which maybe would have been a little bit easier in retrospect. And really the shape of it doesn't really matter if this is supposed to be a battery. And now we just gotta assemble them. Historically, with the Big Dead battery, they used bitumen, a type of asphalt, as kind of a, the, to seal the top. It has the advantage of not being electrically conductive, so it prevents it from shorting out. We don't have any asphalt we've harvested so far, but we do have beeswax, which uh, is similarly not conductive, so we'll make kind of a cap out of that, so hold everything in place, and prevent the two metals from touching. And then we'll fill it up with the electrolyte we've now selected, which is going to be a vinegar. So we're going to use some of the red wine we made previously and has not been stored ideally. It's turned into a bit of a vinegar. And to be honest, it was pretty vinegary to start with. Put everything together and see how much of a voltage we're able to generate. Oh, we are like almost exactly half a volt. That's pretty decent. Might be enough to electroplate, but let's see if I can at least get a zap. No, not enough to feel. You can stack them in the voltage potentially allow us to light up some light bulbs and uh, maybe even charge a phone. Um, it's probably gonna take a few of them. For at least a, a moment at a time, we might have a fair amount of power. Hey, we overshot a little bit. We're at two, two volts. So we should be able to create light with this LED. Turn up the lights and see what we got. There it is. That's it, we have made electricity. We have enough power to light an LED. So if the Baghdad battery was a real battery that was made way back then, there wasn't really too many practical uses of it. There wasn't really LEDs or anything to actually light with it. But one possibility that's theorized is that they could use it for electroplating. There isn't any evidence of electroplating that early in history, but if this was a battery, it's something it could potentially be used for. So we have four of them hooked up again drawing about two volts so this coin we cast way back in our currency episode that's made our bronze we have a solution of copper sulfate and we can see if we can electroplate it and uh, the process of electroplating is kind of the reverse of what's going on in the battery itself where a chemical reaction produces electricity here we have current forcing a chemical reaction that causes the metal to come out of solution and form on the anode which is going to be this coin so we have some copper wire on one end and on the other we'll place the coin so this should allow a very thin plate of copper on our coin so we should hopefully get a nice fresh layer of copper all right starting to form a little bit of copper on there All right, so after letting it run for a while, we were able to electroplate a coin, and give it a nice little copper shine. So in the end, these batteries aren't the most powerful. I was trying to stack a bunch of them to get it to actually power a cell phone and charge it at least a little bit. But in the end, that was not really working out too well. Even with all the batteries, the amperage was just so low, it uh, wasn't enough to meet the minimum of the USB. God damn. <laughs> so the next step is gonna be uh, improving upon this, and that's gonna require sourcing a few new materials to build some bigger and better batteries. So electricity and electronics are not my strong suit, but there's a lot of possibilities and I look forward to exploring more and learning more about it as we go. If anybody has any suggestions of future electronic projects you wanna see us try and attempt, be sure to leave a comment and uh, suggest it and uh, we can see what we can do. Thank you to everyone for watching and supporting us this past year. It's been a little bit challenging. Um, and thank you to everyone who has supported us on Patreon. We are in the midst of rebuilding and have a lot of new videos coming up this next year. So thanks for watching and thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. 
Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching. 